in today's gospel, we are looking at the story of the transfiguration. And <clears throat> it's an important story, and one that may find us saying, wouldn't it be great, just like Peter does, wouldn't it be great if we were there, if we were in the presence of God? There we are in the presence of Jesus, we're in the presence of Moses and Elijah. And remember, the apostles are Jews, and so they understand, here is Moses, the great prophet that liberated the people from the Egyptians and brought us the Ten Commandments. There is Elijah, the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, who speaks out against the harassment of the false prophets and the evil of Jezebel. And there in the midst of this is Jesus, their friend, who they hear God speaking to them, saying that this is the beloved Son of God. And so here they are, and what a powerful, powerful experience this is. And we can listen to this and say, and wouldn't it be great if we were there? But we need to look at it within its whole reality, because maybe it wouldn't be so great. Oh yeah, the experience would be wonderful, but what happens next? They come down the mountain, Jesus tells them about his death and resurrection, something that they don't understand at all, and then the week from hell begins, literally, where they go into Jerusalem, and when the week is all over, Jesus dies on the cross. He resurrects three days later, but that time between his arrest and his resurrection is probably the most painful time they will ever experience in their lives. And there we see the formula that Jesus shows us that is the reality of spiritual life. St. Teresa of Avila talks about not being jealous of those who have powerful spiritual experiences because she suffer, they suffer. She says, oh boy, do they suffer. And this is a classic example. Here we have the great experience that they have, but they suffer. Remember, of those three, one of them by the time the week is over will have denied Jesus. Another one will have run with most of the apostles and scattered. And only one will stay with him right to his death, standing with his mother. But he too will be in this great confusion. And so it does show us the formula that Jesus teaches us. And that formula is when you have great experiences of God, be careful because you're going to go through a deep, deep valley. So those who don't have great experiences of God, who are being faithful every day, don't be jealous of those who do, as St. Teresa of Avila says. Just live your faith and know that God is with you and he hasn't called you to go through the deep, deep valley, which maybe you don't want to do. There's a story, it's a, a true story, and the, and the priest who is involved here does not want to be identified, so I'm not going to tell you. But he is associated with the Archdiocese of Boston. And <clears throat> the priest himself was on retreat and went through a, an intensely powerful experience of God. It was so powerful, he couldn't really give it a name, and the aftermath of the experience lasted for at least a month or so. Sometime during that month, he happened to also read the, the um, writings of St. Teresa of Avila, and in that, he found perfectly described the kind of event that he went through, that she describes what she went through, and he says, this is exactly it. This is what I went through. Now, what is interesting about that book the book was Way of Perfection, it was written 400 years ago. And so here he finds something that's written 400 years ago that tells him of his experience. What he found was a chapter in the book Way of Perfection called The Prayer, the Prayer of Quiet. And so he experiences this, he realizes this. Now, we can all say, wow, that's really powerful, that's wonderful. Well, let me tell you when it happened. It was, in the, it was in March of 2001. Now think about that for a second. Within six months, the whole world was going to change with the September 11th attacks. Within nine months, the whole church was going to change. That's when the Boston Globe began its series on the priest abuse crisis in Boston. And so the person who had a very powerful experience, and he knew the formula, and he knew then, he said, there's going to be a point where we're going to, going to go through great, great trials. And sure enough, they did, and they went through, he did, and so did many other people, went through great, great trials. Who knows if that experience would have 
without it, he would not have been able to survive the great trials he went through. I don't know. But I do, and he doesn't know either. But I do know that the great experience he had gave him the strength to lead others through those great trials and even lead him through those trials so he could help others. What a powerful reality, but it also brings up that simple truth. But let's look at it from a different perspective. When you go through great trials, just like we see in today's gospel, understand that just as Jesus knew what Peter, James, and John were going to go through, and he couldn't prevent it. We say God can do all things. Jesus can do all things. He couldn't prevent this. In order for him to prevent this, he had to turn and disobey the Father. He asked if he could not receive from this cup, which was his crucifixion, and he still said, your will be done to the Father. Therefore, unless he turned and rejected the Father's will, he couldn't prevent him suffering, and he couldn't prevent the apostles' suffering. But what could happen is he could strengthen them through what he could foresee that they could not. So when you're going through, tra- uh, through great trials and you're experiencing some of the great depths that we as humans go through, where we're saying, where is God? Where are we going through? Don't think that God didn't prepare you and say, keep on going. And kind of look back where Christ was that you could see easily see him then, but know he is with you during these very, very painful times, just as he told the apostles, do not be afraid, I am with you always. And so even though they couldn't experience that Christ was with them, they came to learn that he never abandoned them. And so he never abandons you. So any suffering you were going through, know that Christ is with you. And you say, why can't you take this away? Maybe his response will be, because I couldn't take my own suffering away. And I couldn't take the suffering away of those who suffered with me. But keep faith. Keep on going and know that I am with you and know that you will come out of this closer to the eternal life to which I promised. What powerful reality is a powerful promise. So when you see this transfiguration, you may say, boy, I'd like to be there. But maybe the important lesson to receive is saying, this teaches me that no matter what I go through my life, Jesus knows about it just as he says that every hair on my head has been counted. He intimately knows every part of my life, and I will trust that he will get me through this. God bless you.